don't know what in hell I'm doing here. Uh, I'm the least scientific of all the people up on the platform here today. Um, Nine-year-old boys are always finding me out. <laughs> uh, a ten-year-old boy a few years ago ran up to me and he said, is that Mr. Bradbury? I said, yes. He said, that book of yours, The Martian Chronicles? I said, yes. He says, on page 92, he says, where you have the moons of Mars uh, rising in the east? I say, yes. He says, no. <laughs> So I hit him. <laughs> Good for you. I'll be damned if I'll be bullied by a boy. <laughs> I was hoping that during the last few days, as we got closer to Mars and the dust cleared, that we see a lot of Martians standing there with huge signs saying Bradbury was right. <laughs> Or even Clark. <laughs> uh, so, and I have brought along today, I'm going to keep this short because I'd much rather listen to our scientific friends here today tell us about what's coming up this week. But I've, every time I get a group of people together and have them trapped in a hall like this, I bring a poem, see? And you can't escape me. <laughs> Luckily, it's a short poem, but it sums up some of my feelings on why I love space travel, why I write science fiction, why I'm intrigued with what's going on this weekend on Mars. And part of this has my philosophy about space travel in it. And if you'll permit, I'll read it to you. It's very, very short. The fence we walked between the years did balance us serene. It was a place half in the sky where in the green of leaf and promising of peach, we'd reach our hand to touch and almost touch the sky. If we could reach and touch, we said, it would teach us not to, never to, be dead. We ached and almost touched that stuff. Our reach was never quite enough. If only we had taller been and touched God's cuff, his, his hem, we would not have to go with them who've gone before, who, short as us, stood tall as they could stand and hoped by stretching tall that they might keep their land, their home, their hearth their flesh and soul, but they, like us, were standing in a hole. O oh, Thomas, will a race one day stand really tall across the void, across the universe and all, and measured out with rocket fire, at last put Adam's finger forth as on the Sistine ceiling, and God's hand come down the other way to measure man and find him good and gift him with forever's day? I work for that. Short man, large dream. I send my rockets forth between my ears, hoping an inch of good is worth a pound of years. Aching to hear a voice cry back along the universal mall, we've reached Alpha Centauri. We're tall. Oh, God, we're tall. Okay.